Hi there, I'm Anne and welcome to my channel about crypto. In this video, we'll be looking at NFTs or more specifically, how we can spot potentially stolen NFTs on OpenSea and how we can protect yourself from buying a stolen NFT and essentially losing your money. How we can protect yourself from such situation. If you would like to learn more about crypto, NFTs and how to stay safe in Web3, you can check out my course, Crypto Like a Pro. You can find the link in the description. I will show you a couple of different examples here of stolen NFTs and how you may be able to spot them or how sometimes it's actually really difficult to notice that it's a stolen NFT and essentially that it's not always that easy to protect yourself in such situation. So first example is a project called Steady Stack Titans. I'm, I invested in this project so I keep tracking the price of it well pretty much every day. And if you track a project very closely, it's usually quite easy to spot when there's something irregular when it comes to the price. Of course, project's floor can change quite a bit, but sometimes there are things which should really ring alarm bells straight away. So first of all, if you see suddenly that there are NFTs listed significantly below the floor price, or there are multiple NFTs listed from the same wallet below the floor price, that's often an indication that something is wrong. It's not always the case, but very often will be. So for example, if we look at steady stack, current floor price is 1.92 ETH, and it's been around this price for, for quite a while, sort of 1.7, 1.9, around two ETH and so on. And if we look at sales over the last few days, not necessarily the offers accepted, but the actual sales, well, we can see 1.9 here, around 2 or 2.2 ETH, or even offers are still within the similar range, 1.9, 1.8, 1.67, 1.75, and so on. And then we get to those few sales here, five sales, in fact, all coming from the same wallet, as you can see here, all five of them, and all substantially below the previous sales, right? So anything between 1.32 sorry, 1.35 and 1.27. And if you look at previous sales where they were all around half an ETH higher, maybe not quite half an ETH, but, but certainly close to it. So why would someone suddenly accept so many offers so much below the current floor price, right? I mean, of course, it may happen that someone is absolutely desperate for money and they just want to get rid of their NFTs very, very quickly. It does happen. I've seen a similar situation not that long ago. But in this case, actually, because I'm a member of the community, I know that all those NFTs were actually stolen. And when you see something like this, so multiple sales coming from the same wallet, significantly below the floor price, that's very often an indication that there is something wrong with it. At the very least, I would suggest to go to the project's Discord and either see if there are any announcements about those NFTs being stolen or just ask around if people are aware of something happening because it is a bit, a bit weird. Occasionally, of course, it may be a great buying opportunity, but very often you may find that, well, unfortunately, th those are stolen NFTs. Second example I want to show is something slightly less obvious. So we have this Boss Beauty here. And actually this one, as you can see, it's marked that it's been reported for suspicious activity. So it cannot be no longer bought or sold on OpenSea. However, if you go to X2Y2, you can still buy or sell it here. It's marked on OpenSea, but you can still trade it on this marketplace. But if you go back to it, I know who's one of the previous owners of, of this particular NFT. And if you look at the history, what happened is, well, essentially from the moment this NFT was minted. So it was minted by this person who then sold it to this person or this account, right? Then there was a transfer of that NFT. So that's linked to the sale. And then this account transferred it to this wallet. However, there is no sale here. As you can see, there is no price attached to it. So this is just transfer between two wallets. This in itself is nothing suspicious. What very often happens, especially when it comes to more valuable NFTs, is that people purchase it on OpenSea, but then they transfer it to a cold storage wallet, hardware wallet, any other wallet. Basically, they don't want to hold it in their trading wallet, right? So that's absolutely fine. However, when you start seeing multiple transactions like this, 
when an NFT is being moved between wallets without being sold, that's potentially a red flag. And what we can see here is that, okay, this person sold the NFT to this person. This person transferred it to this wallet, which we can assume was a legit transaction. In this case, I know it was a legit transaction, but well, that's reasonable to, to expect even if you don't know the details. But then it was transferred from this wallet to this one, and this wallet then sold it to another person. I mean, if from this wallet it was transferred back to this one, so essentially you would see here Fabrice Crypto, crypto transferring it back to 0x65db, well, that would be the same owner transferring it back from their cold storage to their trading wallet and then selling on OpenSea. That's absolutely fine. But it was moved to yet another wallet, which is a bit strange because that means that it went from this wallet, which we assume is cold storage, to yet another wallet. I mean, why it wouldn't be this trading wallet, right? Or more specifically, if it went to another wallet, why this wallet is then selling it? Of course, it can be just transaction between friends or family members or whatever. They could be just simply passing on that NFT to, to each other. It's possible. But when you see something like this, you should be a bit more careful, especially if that NFT is then listed below the floor price, which it was. Only slightly below, but still. But it was actually a very attractive NFT at a very good price. So even though the price was just slightly below the floor price, for that particular NFT, it was a surprisingly good price point. So you have a transaction here which is somewhat suspicious, and then a price which is also a tiny bit suspicious. When you add these two things together, well, again, there is no guarantee that it was stolen, but there is potential risk that maybe it's a stolen NFT. Again, it may be worth asking in a Discord to, to find out whether there is something wrong with it. And in fact, in this case, this wallet actually did belong to a hacker. If you click on this wallet, you will see that it doesn't exist anymore. OpenSea blocked it. But unfortunately, the damage was already done, right? The person stole that particular NFT and managed to sell it to another person. And the problem is that although OpenSea did block it because it was reported by someone, well, unfortunately, that happened after the sale because otherwise the sale wouldn't take place, right? And then the person who purchased it is actually the person who's then stuck with this NFT. And well, they can try to sell it on X2Y2, but of course, because it's marked for suspicious activity, it will likely be worth less than what it would normally be worth. So you will take a loss. Or worst case scenario, you are not able to sell it at all because it's now reported. And the only person who can remove that flag is the original owner. So it would be in this case, this person right here, right? Who, who had it stolen from them. The project owners cannot unlock that NFT. The person who bought it in good faith, thinking that it was absolutely fine, cannot do anything with it. It's only the person who, who had it stolen from can, can do something about it. If you buy an NFT and it's later on reported stolen, unfortunately it can be reported as stolen or suspicious at any point in the future, you just never know. There is really nothing you can do with it. You, there is nothing OpenSea can do for you. If you contact them, the best they can do is they can offer you to refund the two two and a half percent fee, the fee they take, which of course is, is nothing, especially if it's a more expensive NFT. When you purchase a stolen NFT, well, you can still keep it. You can still have access to the community, or if it's a land in a metaverse, you can still have benefits of owning that land and so on. But if you bought it, hoping to sell it for profit in the future, well, you may be stuck because most likely you either won't be able to sell it at all, or if, even if you can sell it, well, most likely you will have to sell it at a loss because it will be flagged on other platforms. So this is just something to be aware of that, unfortunately, you cannot fully protect yourself from buying stolen NFTs. The best you can do is when you see a really good buying opportunity, just check the transaction history, see if there's anything suspicious, if it changed hands a few times between completely different wallets without actually being sold. 
check if the same wallet is selling multiple other NFTs. Check if they are significantly under the floor price or maybe just a bit under the floor price, but the rarity is they have very good run, rarity rank. So yeah, that price may not seem that great, but actually if someone is selling a really, really rare NFT, just below the floor price, that's still very, very suspicious, right? Because that should be worth substantially more. So that's really all you can do. And other than that, just check out the community, check out the Discord, see if people are posting anything about it. If someone had their NFT stolen, there's pretty good chance that, well, as soon as they realize, they will post about it. And of course, whoever stole those NFTs from them, they will try to get rid of them as quickly as possible, right? Because otherwise, well, if they get flagged, then it's much more difficult to sell them. So most likely if, if someone got hacked, they will, the hacker will post those, uh, will list those NFTs on OpenSea straight away. And also the person who got hacked probably clicked on some sort of a dodgy link or something like that. So there's pretty good likelihood that they will know very, very quickly that something went wrong because it's rather unlikely that someone gained access to their wallet and slowly drain it without them even realizing. It's possible, but it's fairly unlikely. So yeah, it's a slightly tricky situation to navigate. You have to be really, really careful. And unfortunately, unless you're actually minting the NFT, you never can be 100% certain that, that it's safe. Unless, of course, you are buying it from someone who, like in this case, for example, if it was Yamster who minted that NFT, if you buy it from Yamster, well, you know that this cannot be a stolen NFT, right? Because they minted it. So, so you know that this is 100% safe. But anything that happens after that, well, you never have full guarantee that is, it's a 100% safe NFT. So I hope this video was helpful. Web3 can be quite tricky to navigate. If you would like to learn more about it, if you're not entirely sure how to, how to navigate this space, like I said, please do check out my course, Crypto Like a Pro. You can find the link in the description. We'll be launching it very, very soon again. There's a ton of content then, and I'm adding even more content, so it will be really, really exciting. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comment section, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.